the creativity we're looking for is creativity of our thinking. So everybody, meet the one, the only, Gaz I am. Um, very good friend of mine, thinking partner. I pretty much do everything I do in music um, with him, most of you. So Gaz, I'm just going to give you an opportunity to quickly introduce yourself, let people get to know this person I'm always talking about when it comes to music and the creatives. Go over to you guys. Yeah, so um, my name is Gazi M. Um, some people call me Gaz, some people call me Gazi. What is Gozim? I am Nigerian. I am a creative. Um, um, I, I'm a music architect. And I'll tell you what that means in a second. That was literally my wife that helped me with that. Um, I do so many different things within the music industry. Um, I started off as a keyboard player, uh, then music director, producer, um, and live event production, amongst other things. Now I'm, uh, I also consult with churches and with artists. So basically anything, if you want anything within music and you have a concept, I can design it, I'll build it and get you the final product. Literally, that's what I do in a nutshell. The music architect is a nice word, which my wife, she's a writer, so she helped me put it and made it nice. And, and how long have you been doing this? Um, man, I guess, let me think, I'm about 15, 15. 15, 16 mm -hmm. years, like professionally. Yeah, well, I mean, I I'm professionally getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets paid for it. <laughs> right, so we, we, we pretty much talk every day and we talk at length on so many subjects. I mean, you happen to be a thinking partner for me and we're constantly always masterminding on 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 things on 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 virtually almost everything pretty much everything we, yeah. we pretty much talk about everything but today we want to narrow down our conversation um when i was mm -hmm. thinking about this what we're thinking about this summit um naturally because i'm in the creative industry it was important that this summit doesn't just cater to all my other areas but that it also caters to the creative industry, especially um, the music ministry and, and um, the music ministry, people in worship, people in church, of which if I'm actually completely honest, this summit actually was birthed trying to serve those people over two years ago. I've been trying to do this summit for about two years mm -hmm. and it was really about trying to serve the worship industry, if there's anything like that, will serve people in that creative space and in the music and worship space you know we've been talking about it for about two years yeah and Colton just gave me an opportunity to open it all up and i just wanted to make sure that we speak to these people speak to us and help us so today what how are you coping how are you doing in this season first as a creative well you know what I, you know I, I, it's it's quite interesting that you asked that because for me as a creative Actually, for me as a person, um, I'm, one of my strengths is future. Oh. And when I thought about, when I think about COVID and all that is happening, to be honest, it's just another crisis. What do I mean oh. by that? In the sense that as a, when you think about crisis, we're thinking pandemic, and this is big, 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 big. But we have crisis on a daily basis. We have crisis of, oh, I can't get any gig, or I am, I am, I'm, well, I'm out of money, or maybe I've had an accident before, or something has happened where I cannot do things the way I would normally do it. For me, that's crisis. So oh, when COVID happened, there was a part of me that saw some of it coming because. Um, I was in Sierra Leone uh, a couple of months before, and the airport had already, had already started. Um, they had already started asking funny questions. You know, I had a cough in February. I went to my GP, and she told me, asked me where I had been, and I was I've never I've been asked those questions. So it made me start to think. So to be honest, the first, to be honest, really in this season, all I've been thinking about is what would happen after this season. That's all I've been thinking about. Um, as uh, you know, we were both on uh, uh, at a seminar where uh, um, Mr. Karayol said, don't focus on the lockdown, 
focus on the exit. And funny enough, in this season, that's all I have been doing because I was very aware that, or I am very aware that whatever is happening now is going to change how I do things as a creative. Yeah. It's going to change how I work. You know, I am also aware that, you know, when I think about it, um, everywhere is locked down. Social distancing is happening. So then that means that the creative industry is going to be more than likely one of the last industries to come up. So in this time, all I've been thinking about is what can I do to future proof my business and what I do on when we come out. So, so good. I, I like that. So that means you're talking about being adaptable and, and, and that's really what I tell people to, to always stay creative and adaptable. And it, 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 isn't that strange that as creative people, the mm. number one thing that we even use in personal development is look, you have to stay creative and you have to stay adaptable. So how would you suggest or what would you advise or how can creative people adapt in this season? I mean, if you're just a keyboard player, if you were, if you're just someone singing, there are no gigs right now in court. I've had, I've still had ministrations and things like that, even in this season. So it's not like it's all lost. So how would you encourage creatives, especially the ones that have that, those kind of expressions to adapt in this season? Yeah, so I, I call them the guys that play behind the artists, mm -hmm. the guys that behind the music. If you're one of those guys, there are two things. You're either able to do something online through like teaching or something, because at the same time, you know, when I think about it, there are lots of kids at home at the moment. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a potential that there is a bigger market out there than there was before for people who want to learn how to do, uh, uh, how to play an instrument or learn how to sing. Um, also on the, on the other side, just being creative again, because a lot of these things, I, when I keep thinking to myself, the creativity we're looking for is creativity of our thinking. Ooh. So there could be, like you said, you've had ministrations and what the services I can build in this time has to meet a need. If it doesn't meet a need, we're just doing, especially yep. if you're trying to earn money. Yep. <clears throat> you know, so if you're trying to earn money, then go and redo some research and figure out the need. Like you just said to me now, you've done some ministrations. So I would call, I would possibly call all my artist friends or artists or send messages on Instagram or, you know, any social media. How can I create something for you? Can I create a backing track? Oh. You know, if I, if I said to you, oh, I'll create a backing track of some of your songs right now, you will probably snap it up. Yeah, it's good away. <laughs> yeah, because unfortunately- but, but, are, you, are you saying that to me anyway? No, I'm not saying that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let um, me know if to say yes now. Go on. <laughs> say that again? Let me know if to say yes. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, again, you can think about it that way and think, okay, wh what need can I meet at this time? Now, the honest truth, guys, and I'll be totally honest with you, is that there, are, there might be a lot more creatives than there are need or than there is need. Because I think sometimes what I don't want to do is insult your intelligence to say, well, just go online. I'll, like everybody else, I'm sure everyone has thought about all the online things that they can do. Oh. And you might not have the resources to because you don't have a studio and you might not have the money to build something at home. But oh. if you can, those are things you can do. You can, if you have some spare cash, you know, I, I don't know if it's possible in this time, but if you do, or are able to get someone who is willing to invest in you right now, I would build something that can take my services online. That's if I don't have that already. That would be my number one thing. This is beyond COVID now, because I think that our normal coming out of COVID is going to find a lot more online activity within our space. Okay. Question for you then, what, what, so what are the, what are the pains that you're feeling amongst creatives in this season? What, what are some of those pain points? What are some, some of those things 
because because I know I know you play a very um, a very a leading role when especially in 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 this space, especially from the um, gospel music um, stream. Can we call it industry? And you're one of those people that you look look up to, and I know you run something called the Christian Musicians Network. So, and and one of the first things I tell my tell, told my clients or told yeah told most of my clients at the beginning of COVID is look the leader's position is to in this season take care of their people, yes. be there for their people. So I'm sure as the leader that I know you as that your ears will be to the ground for the people that you out care, the people you love, the people. I mean your your church family, the the music the the music teams you lead. What are some of the pain points that you're hearing that it's that seems to be consistent amongst creatives in this season? I think the the biggest thing really, especially for those of them that do it full time, um, because what's happening is we have I have a very unique um, split where I have creatives who look like they're full time but actually work a nine to five. And then we have creatives who do it full time. So for those that are full time is that there is the source of income and the revenue has dried up. And now I don't know what to do. That, I think that's the biggest pain point more than anything else. Inspiration, to be honest, you can get inspiration listening to other people, Go and listen to the word if you're a Christian, meditate, do pray, do all of that. But is where do I find money right now? So when they, when they come to you, then what, what do you tell them? Well, to, to the honest truth is, depending on what the circumstance is, oh. um, it's what well, is there. We'll go through all the, all the different options, all the different avenues. Can we do stuff online? Is there anything that you do that come so natural and so easy to you that other people have, you know, mentioned or they keep mentioning, then if we pick that thing out, okay, what is it? Can we create something out of that thing? So the honest, the thing is a lot of the conversations, weirdly enough, especially if you're looking for, they're looking for short-term money. I have, I have three things. When I think about money, I think of short-term money, I think of midterm money and I think of long-term money. That determines how I operate. When I'm looking for short-term money, I need something to, I'm doing right now yeah. that's exchanging cash, right? Yeah. If I'm doing long-term money, then we can do, we can do things that will, will take time to build short-term money. If we can't do anything around teaching, around um, something online direct to, 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 the, um, to someone's need, to, to meet someone's need. So I don't know if I should say this, but the advice I've been saying is you might need to look for something in the interim. Do you, do you think- of music. Okay. Do you think that every creative, especially in the music side of things, mm. to be teaching, or giving extra value in, in this season? Is it everybody that is going to now be a teacher? Is it everybody that is able to now go online and start doing stuff? No. And like I said before, um, I think we might have a situation, especially in this country, that where we have more, the UK that is, as where we have more creatives than we have need, uh -huh. if that makes sense. So not everybody can be a teacher. Not everybody is going to be able to do, do a backing track. Not everybody is going to be able to pivot to become the front man. Because there's some BVs right now that can easily become artists. And this is the time they've needed to push themselves forward. Right? Okay. But then what do you do, which is the bigger question, if I can't do any of those things? I don't have any of those skills. But yeah. I need money right now. Because if I don't get money right now, Actually, not having money right now is affecting my mental health. Okay. I've got time to feed, mm -hmm. and I need to. So those are like that's a very strong pain point because you know the the nice thing to do would be to say things like yes, you know, you build the confidence and go forward and do that, and we can do that, and we will do that. Mm -hmm. But what happens to that person who can't do that? What do you do in this season? Okay. So what's your answer to them when they ask? That's, 
it's it's the pivot it's the pivot let's look at something else that you do that you have within let's say you have a suitcase what's and you are the suitcase what's within that suitcase that you can take out right now that people need right now and that you can do to give you short-term money okay so many of us and I, I, I don't know. I doubt that creative thought is coming um, because I don't think most people ever thought that there would be a time they wouldn't be playing in a church or playing on a Sunday or being on the road and all that. So this is signal, right? This is, this is even more than signal to us, right? Mm -hmm. So how are creatives meant to show up after this season? Because we definitely know that whatever we're doing before is not going to work. In fact, like you said, this is probably one of the last industries or or that that will possibly open up especially with social distancing and all that so this is probably still going to be going on for a long time which right. makes that um in my funny way of doing saying things this is the time for creatives to give themselves sense so what would that sense mean <laughs> what would that sense <laughs> what would that sense look like right who is educate also who is educating creatives at this time who is talking to them? Who's preparing them for this season? I don't see a lot of that. I see a lot of people get on Instagram and just talk and have and just chat, chat, chat. And I'm not really hearing enough of anyone showing up to actually um, be a leader in this season to to begin to get people to buckle down and begin to get ready for the exit. Right. Well. Let's if one of the things I, I say, and this is my thought pro process on it, is that if you're okay in the moment, in the UK, if you live in the UK or you live in the West, I say you're fine in the lockdown because there is so much help out there, and you just need to go and register and tap into the help. I, I, I have, there is, there are government grants going on along. There are um, individual grants. I've had a few people, just personal people. I had someone call me the other day saying, I'm trying to raise a certain amount of money to help creatives in this time, just to help them with, you know, a, a style spend, you know? So there, there are loads of things happening and still loads of initiatives that are coming along. So if you live in this country, don't worry about that. Let us start to think about the, the exit, what can we do in that time? Let us start to shore up our businesses, what, how we think about things. Look, the first thing I would do is what know your numbers. Oh. It's important as a creative to know our numbers. I find that too many creatives don't know their numbers. What do I mean by that? Financially, what do you need to survive oh. every month? If you don't know that, when that money comes in, you're going to spend it on frivolous things. When you have three times that money, you won't realize it, and it will go the same way it came in. So know your numbers. Start to build that. And once you know your numbers, you're like, okay, cool. This is, at the minimum, this is how, many, how much I need to bring in. So let's say it's a 1,000 pounds. I say, okay, I need a 1,000 pounds. What can I do? Or what do I do at the moment? Is it bringing in a thousand pounds? If it is, great. How can I do something on top of that so I can start shoring up my future? Why? Because what I'm finding is if you're not future minded, every time crisis hits, we are always going to be like, we're always going to come into this position. So the yeah. real thing we're fighting is not the COVID and the lockdown. The real thing where we need to be doing is building for our future so that if COVID happens or something like this or crisis happens, let's use that word, in three years to five years from now, we, and we don't find ourselves in the same position. And a lot of that is going to be the value that you build in yourself. How do I build value? I need to find people that need something and yeah. build myself and make myself almost like, um, make myself really uh, uh, indispensable technically, you know, I'm trying to find the right word, indispensable in that regard that when I am there, they know that they're going to get great value because what people would do in the time of crisis is they protect the value. Mm.
mm. what does value look like for a musician? What kind of values should creative people be holding up? What what would values look like from a creative standpoint, from musician standpoint? So I thought this morning that look, one of those decisions you must make before a crisis is understanding your value. So your values don't change irrespective of the crisis. So so if and, and I like the fact that you've mentioned value. So if if musicians or creative people are people of value, that means in this season, and I've seen you hold up those same values in this same season, those values should be holding up. So what is values in terms, what should what what does values look like when it comes to creative people? Well, for, for me, um, as a creative, the first thing is to understand the values that are important to me because the values that are important to me are the values that I will show up. So for me, for instance, excellence is a value. Let's use that. So that is excellence from a skill point of view, because right now people want good value for money. So if when I, when I come to deliver something, they know I can deliver it skillfully. Okay. Second set of, uh, uh, um, second line would be that when I'm delivering that thing, they actually love speaking to me. I will have good character, Ooh. put it that way. Because at the end of the day, if I can deliver something skillfully and my neighbor can deliver something skillfully, but I, I don't, people don't want to be around me, then I have lost that job technique. Yeah. So I need to be able to deliver skillfully and deliver with good character. And I think if you have those two things, would that, and character being, you know, you're, you deliver on time. If you're going to deliver late, you communicate. If you're going to, if, if, um, if someone is not happy with what you are saying, you don't just flare up and just get highly emotional. Yeah. Look at it and say, okay, cool, how can I serve you? The customer is always right. See yourself as a business. You're not just a hired hand, but you're a business that is meeting the need of a customer. So you look at it from that mindset, you change, it changes how you approach and how you deliver. Because a lot of us deliver with skill, but not with the character to back it up. And I think that in the time of crisis like this, where everyone is already on edge, they need people that they want to be around people that they like. Mm -hmm. So what would, um, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Um, so how can musicians then, or creative people then, add value to themselves, even in this event? So let's just say they, they missed it before the crisis. So the crisis is also an, op an opportune time to be able to make the right type of decision. So what should they be working on right now to improve their value, to add value to what they do to themselves, such that when they come out of this season, they are people of value. Well, in this in this season, I think that um, the, it will be around those two things as well. Okay. Add any add any skills. Add your skill. Add uh, up, upgrade your skill. You know, the like upgrade, upgrade your skill, guys. Upgrade your skill. Upgrade your skill. Um, because I think with that, um, there are loads of there are loads of new things that have come out over the last few years that unless you've had the time, you've been running around doing gigs, running around doing events, and you've not had the time to sit and study. So study the new equipment that's out there, study the new software that's out there, and that would help you upgrade your skill level and help you deliver even better quality stuff. All right, so let's stay there. So what does that look like, especially for someone like you? Um, uh, a dad, a husband, a dad of two children. I know how hectic it is for us daytime. So mm -hmm. <laughs> where are they going to find the time to be upgrading anything in this season? Uh, look, I think anything that means so much to you, you find the time to, you find the time, you create the time for it. Okay. Um, what I practically do um, is do, I work only in the evenings. Right now in this season, I have committed to my family because I can afford to. I have committed myself mostly to my family to make sure that as much as I can be, I am there with the kids. We've got two children and I'm, I'm a father, I'm a husband. So 
with all for all my all my travels and gallivanting of previous years, this is time to spend some time and with my kids and spend some quality time with them and my wife also and support her in some of the things that she wants to do. So I call my kids the 12, 12 seven contingency. They're up 12 hours a day, seven days a week. So after seven o'clock or after eight o'clock is when I really have time to do anything. And in between eight and 12 for me is optimal time as a family man. That, okay, in that time, that's where I make some of my calls. That's where I speak to people that I feel inspire me. Um, that's where I spend time studying and doing all So I only have four hours a day. It's not as much. If you're a single person and maybe you're not working, you don't work in nine to five, you've got a lot of time to, to do some research and work the stuff. You have so no... Here. Go on. Go on. You so have I'm no... hearing another value. So I'm yes. hearing a work ethic. Yeah. So there is a work ethic. So there is you understanding that I need to do what I need to do in the data, but there's still no excuse. I'm going to have to come back and invest in my growth, invest in the things that I need to do, yes. because that's something that is important to do in this season. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. And, but also is that it is important, what I do, my craft, my business is important to me. Yeah. It's not number one, but it is, it is very important to me because this is how I make a living. So I think that the shift is, this is how I make my living and I have to stay relevant. Yeah. I have to stay relevant and that has to do with how I work how what new technologies are out there that I can use to continue to stay relevant in my industry. Okay. So if I want to stay relevant, then I do it. If I don't want to, then I just chill and watch Netflix. Okay, so in, in my other world as a coach, speaker, I know that we, we draw this kind of banter around Napoleon Hill said that in every adversity is the seed of equivalent advantage and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So when when we use that around creatives yeah. what is the equivalent advantage in this season for them okay cool so i like that because when i think about it there's another one that says crisis reveals who you are yeah and also crisis reveals what you have or what you don't have in this crisis because if you look closely your pain point should point you to a place where you need to upgrade or you need to work on. So if I didn't have as much, um, for instance, I didn't have as much savings or as much cash flow in my business or, you know, I now know that, okay, I need to build a system around this so that when I come out of this, when I start to do whatever I do, money doesn't just come in and go out. I have a system of what my expenses are. I have a system of what I need to save and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If I find out that all my, all my work dried up, but for some reason, my counterpart is still working somehow, then that means my relationship and my community is not strong enough. So yeah. then that shows me that, okay, I need to work on building my relationships because it's going to take more than just my skill to deliver stuff, which is where the character thing comes in. If people want to be around you, then when things like this happen, they would always think about you first. Let's go to money. Let's go to money. Mm. So um, I happen to be the guy in front, right? Like you said, so the guys behind are the musicians and artists. Then. And I had this lovely team for a while, for a long while. Um, mm. I, I, I love my team so much. And, but one thing you see with musicians a lot, everybody's constantly on about how much is the gig paying and how much is the gig paying and how much is the gig, how much is the going to pay, da, 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 da. Is that gig money ever enough? Uh, man, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a whole different story right there and a whole nother topic. Well, at that, at that point, I think that number one, it's it's the mindset that you have towards money because for some people 
um, they have been burnt and hurt in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing we don't talk about enough. Um, so when someone is asking you for money, sometimes it's because they have been promised money many times and they have not been given it. Yeah. Okay. So when they come to you like that or come to an artist like that, it's because they're like, I don't want to be taken for granted. Okay. So I need to make sure I secure my business because where I have left my business in the hands of somebody else, they've messed it up. So, so does that not go back to the point you talked about in terms of, in terms of, I think, I think how you carry yourself, you won't find yourself in that position. Not no. that we don't find people who still treat us that way, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so where, where I really want to go with that point is, okay, so with all that money we, in quote, they make from the games, right? Mm. Is that money now enough? Are they saving musicians? Do they talk about savings? What do they do with their finances from all that gig? Is there is there pre-planning? Because I guess when I hear and when I have those conversations with them, I I I tend to hear people who just need give us this day our daily bread. It doesn't come from a a, a much thinking has gone into how I show up. And these are some of those conversations even you and I have had to have in the past and say, hey, guy, you, you are no longer a keyboardist. You mm -hmm. don't keep showing up as a keyboardist because if you keep showing up that way, you're always going to be treated as a keyboardist. Yes. You know, so, and, 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 and so that's, that's what I want you to talk into. Too. How can musicians begin to see themselves more than just someone who plays an instrument? Because when you treat yourself that way, that money you're constantly asking for is always going to be, you're always going to be treated like it's a wage. And like now we're finding ourselves it's not enough. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that first of all, a practical thing to do would be, like I said earlier on, actually know your figures. Mm. Because if you, like you said just now, if you don't pre-plan, what happens is, you just keep chasing your tail. Yeah. And actually, just taking one step back, I say that in this period of the, the one of great advantage is that we have an opportunity Ooh. to move from what I call renting nice. to owning. As a musician, you have an opportunity to rent from move from renting to owning because you can now stop and think, okay, Everything I've done to date, where has it got me? The people that inspire me, do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody that you're looking toward? Because sometimes as well, you can't build something that you don't have a blueprint for. Nice. So if you're going to build at this thing and say, I need to move from keyboard, keyboardist to this other thing, what are you moving to? Yeah. So I, the first thing is, and I can't tell you what that is, but you have to make a decision, look at someone and say, I like that thing. Because the honest truth is, I don't know the, the final destination, but I know what I am looking at right now and I will move towards that thing. Cool. So how do I stop chasing money? Like, first of all, know your figures. Know what you can afford to sow because there's an, there is a place for free stuff. So for, for, for people in corporate world, they'll call it loss leader, lead magnet, all those kind of things in sales. So we are also selling as musicians. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to have to give what you do for free to get the, the person that you're working with to see the value you bring to them. Because the value is judged based on the person that's receiving it. Yeah. So you deliver something and if some, for some people they have a, um, like a resume and they can show you all the things they've done and that starts to show the amount of value they can bring into someone's situation, which helps your negotiating power. If you don't have that, then start to think about the times that you're going to sow. I have done probably over 500 free things and I still keep doing it because there is value in sewing. There is value in sewing, but I know my figures. So I'm not going to do it at the detriment of my family. 
or at the detriment of my expenses, which is where it gets crazy. You can't sow all your life or all your good time. So if you're a Christian and you believe in tithing, I believe at the very minimum, sow 10% of your time. Oh. It's important yeah. because that gives you visibility. Yeah. That shows the value that you can add to that person and other people watching. You never know who is watching. I have many stories. Every big thing I have done, actually, I'll go there real quick, has come from a small thing that I was doing. So I, I met somebody that gave me this big opportunity. Most of the time, I've found out that it, it has come from a very, very small place, a very small event. I was just doing something as a gift to someone else. And I didn't know that person was going to be there, and they saw it. So I think that seed is very, very important. Know your figures is very, very important. And then you can start to plan where you are heading. Okay, because of time, I, I can't see much questions on the same. I want you to, I think it was mental health week last week or so. And I mm -hmm. want you to, to kind of go, in, go into that end and, and talk about how the creative person, especially in this time, can take care of their mental health. What are you doing? with regards to your own mental health and what advices would you, would you advice do you have for um, creatives in this time to make sure that their mental health is in check? First of all, I remove all the triggers. Yeah. Anything that would make me feel, identify the triggers first of all actually, and remove it. So if I have to stop watching the news, that's what it is. If I have to stop speaking to that person that every time I come off the phone, I just feel drained and down. I, I, I don't, I take them out completely. The other day, I just had this moment of, I had so much to do. There's a lot going on in the family. I had some, some studying to do. I turned my phone to, to flight mode. So it's okay to take time out for yourself. I also pray. I'm a Christian, I'm a man of faith. And sometimes when I get overwhelmed, I look unto God. He calms my nerves. He centers me. And th those, are, those are like literally the two things I do. I remove everything that's, that will cause uh, me to go into a bit of a mental uh, um, spiral. And I pray. Are you hearing from the musicians you lead and things like that? Are there people struggling in such areas at the moment? And where can they get support or where can they get help, even in times like this? Um, it, yeah, in this season, um, what, what I, I set up something called the Christian Musicians Network. Um, and that was something that I'd been feeling to do. But what pushed it over the edge, to be honest, um, was the fact that in, when I started speaking to musicians in this time, they were like totally lost. They didn't know what to do. They felt depressed. They did, felt like n nobody understood or that they were the only ones going through it and that it was just something they had done wrong. So I set up this uh, um, community of musicians and said, look, we'll come together and let's talk stuff. Let's talk real life, life off the stage. Things that we can do um, to help us through this season and beyond. So it's the Christian Musicians Network and that, that is one place I know you can get uh, help and you can just be and just talk, ask questions. So now I, I want you to just tell people where they can reach. So for anybody who's going to watch this or watch this later, you're in the creatives, you're a musician. Um, this is, this is, this is somebody who you need to speak to regularly in this, in this times work. How can people reach you? How can people find you? How can people um, join the Christian millionaire? Um, Christian millionaire is that? <laughs> Yeah, I think that will add Christian, Christian Musicians Network yeah. that will become millionaires. That's all right too. Um, and I know you. I know you've just launched a podcast also. Do you want to talk about some of the things you're doing in this season and some what we can expect from Guzzi after the season also? Um, yeah. So Christian Musicians Network. Off the off the back of that, we launched a podcast with um, our first guest was uh, ATA Aaron T Aaron right here, and we're just talking about. Um, thought and character. Um, and that's going to happen probably at least twice a month. That's the aim. And where we just talk about um, things that musicians would not normally get access to. 
Uh, there's loads of skill stuff out there, but not loads of mind and, and thinking stuff mm. out there. So that's the podcast. Um, find me on Instagram. I'm I'm not a real social media person, to be honest, but you can find me on Instagram, send me a DM, or you can go to my website. It's gozim.com. So G-O-Z-I-A-M.com. You, there's an, um, you can send me a message, send me an email. What's your, actually, what's your Instagram? Instagram is the same thing at gozim. So everything is at Cause I am, and from on that link in my bio, you'll find a link to the Christian uh, Musicians Network on there as well. Cool. So when when this world when this normal when this season is over, mm. would you go back to the traveling life, the, the 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 life that we saw? We're always on the plane. Where what 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 do you think? How do you think that is about is likely to play? Um, I think that the, the because the normal has changed and will definitely change if you haven't seen it yet. Mm. Um, I think a lot more things are going to go online. Mm. A lot more things are going to go online. I think there's still a place for the f- meeting physically. Um, nothing takes it. Even, you know, we've done doing this online thing. I would still prefer to do it in front of people. Yeah. That's my jam. Um, but I think we'll be doing a lot more online because it's better use of time, you know. Um, but so as much as possible, unless it's absolutely necessary for me, I won't be just traveling here, there and everywhere once we come out of this. Right. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Gazi, for your time. What will be the Thank you, final man. word for what will be a final word for your for the creatives, for people who are watching, for musicians? Um, something they can hold on to um, even in this season as we begin to round up as we round up. I would just say stay creative, guys. Stay creative. We have what it takes in us to get through this and and thrive beyond this. Stay creative. Don't put yourself in a box. Now Now that's throwing up one more question, one final question. So how do you stay creative? Well, when I say stay creative, I'm saying think, stay creative in your mind. Um, how do I do that? Well, when, when you hit a block, when you hit something that you can't move, find a way to get around it. You are not limited by that thing blocking you. Even if you have to jump over it, call somebody, pick up the phone and say, hey, I am stuck. How do I get out of this? do that because without creativity you're not going to come out of this okay so what i think i'm I'm hearing is number one do what you can do in your in in, within yourself but definitely reach out to your support network and i think that's that's one of those things that covid um the new normal is never going to take away they're still going to be the place for the touch they're still going to be a place to meet people um, Zoom is never going to take is never going to take the place of being in the same room and playing music like we enjoy. So, guys, in this season, everybody, uh, as a final word, everybody, make sure you reach out to your support network. Make sure you stay around the people you love. Make sure you look for a mentor like Gazi has said. Look for people who you can look up to and who you can be totally vulnerable with, and let them know how you're feeling and let them speak into you and help you get through this. Thanks everyone for watching and see you at eight o'clock. Goodbye everybody and God bless.